Ford here in Hollywood. Are you ready for March Madness? Is it, is it no? Not at all, huh? Well, it's... <laughs> My hope is that we get all the madness out in March so we don't have any left for November. But um, <laughs> there were two uh, college basketball playing games today. There were 16 games tomorrow, another 16 the day after that, and then eight games, and another eight games, and then four games, four games, two games, two games, two games, one game, and then we go back to working at work, which is, again, <laughs> we get no work done when the games are on. I'm warning you now, tomorrow night's show will be terrible. So, <laughs> I would just get some sleep or something tomorrow. This is interesting, Gonzaga tomorrow plays McNeese State, which not only do I not believe uh, Gonzaga is a real place, I don't think there's any such place as McNeese State either. I know for a fact there are 50 states, McNeese is not one of them, okay? <laughs> This is a game between two imaginary teams they're putting on. The AI is finally taken over. <laughs> well, they say the uh, odds of filling out a perfect bracket are one in 120.1 billion. Statistically speaking, you are 455 times more likely to get killed and eaten by a shark. <laughs> True. President Biden uh, released his bracket today. He picked Yukon to win, whereas Donald Trump, not only won't he release his bracket, he won't fill one out at all because he's afraid of getting eaten by that shark. But if I'm sitting down and that boat's going down and I'm on top of a battery, and the water starts flooding in, I'm getting concerned. But then I look 10 yards to my left and there's a shark over there. So I have a choice of electrocution or shark. You know what I'm gonna take? Electrocution. I will take electrocution every single time. Do we agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, apparently there's a lot of agreement. I can go either way. The great white supremacist has until money to come up with a $464 million bond, or the state may seize and sell his property. Trump said nobody has ever heard of anything like this before. Trump needs cash and... Yeah, we never heard of most of the crazy stuff you do before, but, I mean, nobody ever heard of the president changing the weather with a Sharpie before either. <laughs> Something tells me over the weekend, Trump's gonna start talking about how strong Vladimir Putin is, and suddenly a dump truck full of rubles will pull up and cover this for him. But of course, the real loser here is Melania. She may end up with half of the nothing he owns now. I hope she got an advance on that prenup, because if you think she hates him now, wait until he's poor. That's gonna... <laughs> but his excuses, I will say, are richer than ever. Trump yesterday asked the Supreme Court to grant him absolute immunity in the case related to the events of January 6th. And he also wants immunity from chlamydia, just in case, you know. <laughs> but his argument is that the threat of future imprisonment, not for him, it would prevent the president from doing uh, potentially illegal things, which I think is the point of prison in the first place. But <laughs> it turns out the guy who bragged to Billy Bush he could do whatever he wants thinks he should be allowed to do whatever he wants. His lawyers told the court denial of criminal immunity would incapacitate every future president with de facto blackmail and extortion while in office and condemn him to years of post-office trauma at the hands of political opponents, which sounds bad, right? And yet somehow we've had 44 presidents before him that never happened to any of them except for this one guy. Why do you think that is? Could it be because none of them tried to violently overthrow an election they lost? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> The appeals court, by the way, the appeals court took one look at this dumb argument and did the legal equivalent of when you drop a dictionary on a cockroach. They're like, but the Supreme Court was like, hang on, scrape those bug guts off the floor and let us take a look. We want to make sure that wasn't a bald eagle you crushed with that book. There's no reason for them to even be hearing this case. And the fact that they are probably means there won't be a trial before the election. And also, the, you know, the scariest thing about the office of president is you don't even need immunity to do bad things. Other people can do bad things for you. Anyone can do anything. And if you like what they did, you could just pardon them because you're president. If any person decided to do something terrible to someone you hate, as long as it's a federal crime, you could just wave your magic president wand and they're free to go. That's, a, that's like wizard power. That's a lot of power. <laughs> like for Father's Day, Eric and Don Jr. could walk into a bank, hand the teller a note that says, give us all your money. Spelled wrong, of course. <laughs> money would be spelled M-O-N-I-E. But they, then they could take that money, they could go buy their father a gold statue of himself, they could give him the statue, and when the cops come to lock him up, the wand comes out, they go right back to their five-bedroom homes 
in a gated community near daddy's golf course. No penalty at all. Although he would probably have them arrested, right? I mean, <laughs> but a president could make some seriously crazy stuff happen. If you're dumb and arrogant, and you commit the crimes yourself on television, then you have a problem. Then you have to beg the Supreme Court for something preposterous, like immunity. But if Donald Trump wants immunity, he should drink bleach like he told us to do when we wanted immunity. That's, and this had to be a punch in the Trump nuts. Trump scored five primary wins last night, but not as bigly as he was hoping he would. In Arizona, he lost more than 20% of the Republican vote. In Florida, he lost more than 17% of the Republican vote to a pair of opponents who aren't even running anymore. Nikki Haley dropped out two weeks ago. I'm pretty sure Ron DeSantis choked on a meatball at Christmas. <laughs> but Trump did do well amongst voters who have accidentally shot their washing machines with a handgun. He got almost 100%. <laughs> this is good. In Ohio, there's a Trumper named Derek Myers. He was running for a congressional seat there. He mistakenly sent out a concession email hours before the polls closed. He said, the email said, tonight did not go as we had hoped. It wasn't even tonight yet, and it didn't go as they hoped. <laughs> and then they, he quickly sent out a follow-up that said, disregard concession email. <laughs> and then he finished in 11th place, in last place. On second though, don't disregard concession email. This is, uh, by the way, Derek Myers. So tonight didn't go as we'd hoped, but as we know, this race is decided in the primary. So I want to give my congratulations to the congressman-elect. I'm looking forward to uniting behind him and working with him to get President Trump re-elected to the White House in November and evicting Joe Biden. Listen, I'm in my 30s, and as I've told everyone on this campaign trail, if I don't win this race, that's okay, because I've got 30 or 50 more years left, and that's if I live a good life. I'm looking forward to staying in the arena of Ohio politics and looking forward to working with all the Republicans to make Ohio great again. Yeah, and also I would like to announce I am suing the guy who cuts my hair for $5 billion. <laughs> I mean, that's one hell of a super cut. That is... <laughs> he somehow looks like Beavis and Butthead all at once. <laughs> no MAGA faithful has fallen softer on harder times than the My Pillow man, Mike Lindell, who may be out of money, but he is not running low on crazy life stories. But through all that time, I had over 14 near-death experiences. I'd be in Mexico on a family vacation, and they're going to cut my head off uh, uh, the cartel. And um, the guy's cutting my head off. He goes, are you ready to cut my head? I go, I go, um, I go I'm not going to buy this sword. And the other guy goes, senor, he doesn't want to sell you a sword. He wants to cut off your head. And I go, what's wrong with you? You know, and, and they, but they're going, what's wrong? With this guy's loco. He wants to, you know, they, and, uh, but it was just deflection. And, and, um, <laughs> I went, what did I do when I got out of that? I went and did another line of cocaine. You know? <laughs> it's a family vacation. <laughs> that's, that's how he got in the pillow business. He needed some place to put his decapitated head. And Mike has been promising to reveal bombshell evidence of voter fraud uh, for the last couple of weeks. Uh, he's been, this is something he's been saying now for quite some time. This evidence tonight is going to be so explosive and so it's going to shock the world. You're going to see something else that will shock the world. Look at this most explosive, shocking evidence the world has ever seen. You're going to go, whoa, it's going to shock the world. 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 It's so shocking. It should shock the world. Woo! I mean, it's going to shock the world. 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 No one's going to believe it. It's going to shock the world. Well, you know what? He finally did release that evidence, so you're not going to believe it. it the world has gone unshocked. The world <laughs> is completely unshocked. Would you rather shock the world or be eaten by a shark? You know what I'm going to take? Electrocution. I will take electrocution every single time. Do All right. Agree? So he picked shock the world, I guess. <laughs> this doesn't. This doesn't seem good. According to the World Happiness Report, for the first time ever, the United States is not among the top 20 happiest countries. Out of 143 countries, we came in 23rd place this year. We're only one spot ahead of Germany, which, of, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Of course we're not happy. We've got an election coming up. We're going to have to choose between a dinosaur and an orangutan. Well, <laughs> even Slovenia, which came in 21st place, is a happier country than America, which is another slap in the face for Melania. 
Iceland is the third happiest country. Denmark is second. You know what the happiest country in the world is, Guillermo? You want to guess? Mexico? No. No? No? Uh, Italy? No, not Italy. Finland is Finland? the happiest. The Finns are the happiest people, which makes sense. You ever Google a picture of Finland? This is a, you could, this is what happens, it pops up. It's, people have reindeers for cars there, of course. So the, to the people of Finland, I say, Oni Tullet, which means, uh, that means go choke on licorice. And we have many visitors from many happy countries here in Hollywood. Spring has sprung and the boulevard in our neighborhood is once again packed with sweaty visitors from afar. And some of those visitors, most of the young ones, stay just a couple of doors down from us at a youth hostel. There's a youth hostel called the Same Sun Youth Hostel right down the street here. Their, their beds uh, go for around 30 bucks a night. The accommodations are not glamorous, but they are cheap. And tonight, we are going to give a pair of young travelers the chance to compete to move into a luxurious suite at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. It's time to play Hostel La Vista. Thank you. Our announcer, Lou, is outside with our contestants tonight. Hi, Lou. Hey, what's going on, Jimmy? Lou, were you told in advance you'd be wearing that? You know, no. No. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it's been a while since I put it on, so it's, <laughs> it's tight in here. It's looking great. Uh, let's meet our players here. Have you met the players? Will you introduce our players? Of course. We have Jorge and Veronica. Jorge and Veronica. Jorge. <laughs> Where are you from, Jorge? I'm from Mexico, Mexico, for I hear guys. A little bird told me it's the happiest country in the world. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Look at me, I mean. <laughs> and Veronica, where are you from? I live in Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah. oh, very good. All right, and you're here, do you like our country so far? Well, I just arrived yesterday, and uh, I like it, yeah. You do? Definitely. Is this your first time here? Yeah. How about you, Jorge? Yeah. No, it's my second time here, actually. Okay, so you may have a little bit of an advantage here, Jorge, uh, in this game. I don't know. It was a long uh, time ago. Okay, well, we're not going to fight about it. I'm just saying you might. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're playing for tonight. You're playing for a luxury room at the historic Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. You'll enjoy a 700-square-foot suite with a king-size bed, hardwood floors, pillows, the whole thing. All you have to do to win is no more than your opponent does about this place you are visiting. Hello, people on sightseeing tour bus. All right. <laughs> I'm going to ask some questions about our city and state, and whichever of you answers more of them correctly gets the room. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. Yes, we are. All right. Question number one. What stadium located in Pasadena hosts a famous New Year's Day college football game of the same name? <laughs> Veronica. California Stadium? No, that's a really good guess, but it's not California Stadium. Jorge, you want to take a shot? No, I don't know. Okay, don't know. well, the sorry. answer is the Rose Bowl. Have you ever heard of the Rose Bowl? No, actually, no, I'm sorry. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, next time, maybe it'll ring a bell, all right? Yeah. Uh, what does this machine, take a look at your screen, measure? This machine, what does it measure? Earthquakes. That is exactly right, Jorge. It measures the, that's a Richter scale. It measures the tremors in the earth. Jorge, you are ahead with temp. Do you have earthquakes in Switzerland, Veronica? Not that I know. All right, well, it seems like if one happens, you'll know, yeah. Uh, Jorge, you've got the lead. Next question. What is this man's job? This man on the screen right there. What is his job? Ring in if you know. Veronica. <laughs> Veronica, are you OK? Uh, politician? He looks Well, angry. that is correct, but we'll need more specificity. Or a? He's the governor. He is the governor of California. <laughs> was that just a guess? Yes, of, of course it was a guess. All right, it's a good guess. All right, all right, you got the lead, Jorge. There's a. Lucky question man. Question number uh, four. There's a famous park in Los Angeles named after its benefactor, Griffith J. Griffith. What is that park called? <laughs> Buzz in if you know. Park. Uh, Jorge? MacArthur's Park? No. <laughs> not MacArthur's Park. Named after uh, its benefactor, Griffith J. Griffith. Veronica, do you know? Griffith J. Griffith? 
Well, yeah, that's the name of the park. It's Griffin Park. All right, Veronica, you're back in the game. Next question, what is the name of the professional sports team named after big sailing ships? It is a basketball uh, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ellie. Oh. LA, LA. It is on the tip of Jorge. The Lakers? No, it is not the Lakers. Uh, that is not a ship, but. LA. Cru not cruisers? Not cruisers. <laughs> the cruisers? <laughs> oh my god. No, it is not the cruisers. Not it the is cruisers. the Clippers. <laughs> We're not allowed to say that word on television Sorry. here, <laughs> Veronica. I want a street. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay, Ari, make a really good point. All right. All right, let's go. Uh, this is the only U.S. president who was born in Southern California. Can you name him? Jorge. Nixon. That's right, Jorge. <laughs> you nailed it, Jorge. That's very good, Jorge. <laughs> Holy moly. You know what? I think Jorge's got an insurmountable lead. I think we have a winner here, Lou. What I do you think? So. I think so. Yes, uh, I do want to say to Jorge, congratulations. You are on your way to the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. A beautiful suite there. But don't worry, Veronica, you're not going back to that hostel empty-handed. For you. you, we've got a roll of toilet paper and a slanket. Enjoy. Uh, Give our regards to everyone Thanks back home. Clear. Lou will help you with your bags. All right. Yeah. All right. Jorge, you go with Lou. Veronica, you go good back. Luck. Yeah, all right. You know where to go. All right. Very good. <laughs> Have fun. And thank you for playing Hostel La Vista.